Hello, welcome to today's Heart to Heart show. This is Heart to Heart and I'm Lisa Kamikazi, your host. I hope you're getting excited about Christmas. My family gets so excited about Christmas. They actually get overboard sometimes. And I hope wherever you are, whichever circumstance you are, you get excited. Why is it exciting? It's because it's not just to eat and drink. It's not just to dress up. It's not just a festive season. It's a time where we remember that God loved us so much loved us so much that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall have eternal life and not perish so that's why we need to celebrate this whether we have what we need or not whether we have meat or not whether we have new clothes or not we have to celebrate because he is worthy of our praises he's worthy of our celebration so as we get into today's show it's going to be a special one as i just said it's a christmas season so we thought about something special and something different for you for this sunday so what do we have today today we have actually gone into the field with my team and we visited people who are being the hands and the feet of Jesus. We visited people who are showing the love of God in actions. I think it's not actually enough. It's not enough to, to talk about the love of God and not demonstrate it. And what we love about the people we visited is that the love of God that we always talk about, they are putting it into actions. And how are they doing it? It's Masaka Farm. Probably you've heard of Masaka Farm. You've seen it in fridges, in supermarket. You've seen their yogurts probably, or their butter and so many other products. But what are we talking about here today? It's not about their product it's actually about the story behind Masaka Farm. Why is there a, a company as Masaka Farm? Who founded it and why and when? So we are going to take you into that story and understand the heartbeat. It's a story of love. It's a really love story. And as you understand their heartbeat, you will understand why we are featuring such a story on today's Heart to Heart show. So don't go away. Follow Heart to Heart. I'm coming back. Masaka Farm, a random dairy company that is known for its yogurt flavors and other products, has an incredible love story behind it and its heartbeat is the love of God. Esther Mute, who is the operation and technical manager, is sharing with us how it all started back in 2015. Um, Masaka Creamery was founded by John Potter. John worked in Rwanda as a consultant for many years but then felt a calling from God to make an impact. And when he listened to the calling, the calling was make an impact on the deaf community in Rwanda. So he went back to America and then he came back to Rwanda looking for how could he be able to make an impact on the deaf community in Rwanda. Mm. Luckily for him at that point, there was a factory that was up for sale called Masaka Farms. Oh, it was already up for sale. It was already up for sale. Mm. It was running for some time, then they had challenges that were closed down. Mm. So it was up for sale. So he bought the factory. When mm. he bought it, he actually didn't have any idea where to start. For him, he just knew God is calling me to make an impact. I need to find a way of doing it. Mm. So initially when he started, he, he had um, an idea of some two deaf ladies that he could start with. So he got them in, trained them how to make yogurt. They started making the yogurt. Then as the company grew, he needed more. So these two called their two friends, called their two friends. Eventually the deaf were almost the same number as the hearing. But then the deaf are very hardworking and they have a very strong sense of relationship. They love each other so much. So eventually they outgrew the hearing. So mm. the hearing now became a bit uncomfortable and then hard to live. And yes, so that's how it grew to being 100% production, being deaf. Mm. So currently from two, we are at 40 and the whole production team is deaf all the way from the management. Wow, like the whole production team. The whole team. production team. And we are also growing them into distribution. We also now have two in distribution. We have a, a, a mechanical technician also who is deaf. We also have an accountant who is deaf. So they are, they are going all over. Because for us is to make an impact and to make sure that they are getting opportunities in every single department in the factory. But not just in the factory, but even in other businesses. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. I believe that's the heart of God. That's the heart of God to see the people who are actually um, 
they are, they are skilled in some ways, that they have their strength, but some people don't easily recognize them. Mm -hmm. But to give them an opportunity to be in a place like this where they can actually really function and, and, and be uh, pr fruitful, mm -hmm. I think it's a huge blessing to them and to the, to the whole nation. Mm -hmm. We are yeah. a faith-driven company. We mm -hmm. believe in God, all of us. We pray a lot. We, we, we listen to God calling on us. And even, even when you talk about our purpose, our purpose is to, 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 to make a difference to the vulnerable communities. Our purpose is to grow them, the, the downtrodden in the community. So for us, it's, it's a God-given purpose, and we're very keen on that and focused on God. Everything we do, we focus on God. This company is made of 60% of deaf youth people. How do they reach them when recruiting, and where do they find them from? Initially, it was a big challenge because most people, I think, have had very bad experiences with their children um, being deaf. They've had people misuse them. They've had people lie to them. We are going to, to give them an opportunity, but they end up making them do other things. So initially, it was very difficult for us to be able to, to gain that trust. So we depended a lot on word of mouth from the employees that we already had because for them, they've worked with us, they see what we are doing, they see that it's a good place for them to work. So they would call their friends, their friends then would come in. But um, two years ago, we, we, ha we got a partnership with an NGO called Kilimo Trust. So Kilimo Trust uh, is an NGO that is, uh, has a program where they are raising uh, the youth in Rwanda. So with them, they have offices in every district. So using their offices, they've been able to reach uh, very corners of Rwanda that we were not able to reach before and talk to the local leaders. And I think also the fact that we've been in the market for so long and people are able to see and we have our staff also advocating, then they can see that we're not misusing their children and they bring them, to, bring them to us. We also give them an opportunity when we are calling for recruitment. The parents, we, they have an opportunity to visit us here at the factory. So they come with their children. They get to see it's a factory where it's actually working. They get to meet other deaf youth who are actually working here, they get to hear their experiences. So we've been able to gain that trust. And for the last one year or so, we've seen a lot of people now coming in without us even having to prompt them, because then they've been able to, to know that we are doing something for their children, we are not misusing them. Yes. What is actually the heart behind hiring deaf people and what does it mean to people carrying out John Potter's vision? For John, John Potter, the original owner, it was a purpose. It's a purpose. For him, it's a God-given purpose. It is purpose in life is to raise the deaf in Rwanda. For us who work with them on a daily basis, it's our faith. It's what we've been able to see them do. It's the impact that we feel we are making into their lives and into the communities that, that depend on them. We work with these youth. These youth have families who actually depend on them. When we see them work, when we see what they're able to achieve, we, we have a different view. We look at God and we see this even as our purpose, even as the, people, as the leaders that are working with them. And we know we are doing something. We are, we are using what God has blessed us with to be able to make a difference in someone else's life. As God-fearing people, we also look at that as our purpose. When I wake up in the morning, it gives me a lot of joy and I get very motivated when I know I'm coming to Massacre and I know the difference that I'm making in someone else's life. Not that the youth that I'm working with, but that youth who is married has a family. That youth who is not married is taking care of his mother or her mother. That youth who is not married is actually taking the siblings to school. For me, that's a great motivation to come to work. Yes. Apart from hiring deaf people, do they share Christ openly with them? We do a lot of that. So every single morning before we start to work, we all sit and we pray and we, we read a verse and we discuss about it. So for us, it's a way of life. For us, talking about God, bringing people to Christ is a way of life. It's not just about job. We do have even a leader who is actually specifically uh, has a task to make sure that every single week we have a devotional time with the whole team. And Ms. Alfonsin, she's also deaf. She's our human inclusion manager. One of her tasks is to make sure that we have a devotional two hours every week with a team where we discuss about God. We've seen lives transformed. We've seen people, not just the deaf, but even the hearing who've come to know Christ through what we are doing. Yes, so for us, it's, it's, in, it's inherent for us. It's, one, it's, it's, it's a value for us that we work with people, the people we interact with, even our suppliers. The way we interact with our suppliers is very different from any other company. 
we are very big on integrity is one of our values is faith is a faith based companies if i go to a company and they're saying you know what uh, if I, I'll give you a discount for 10 percent if you don't give if I don't have to give you a receipt I'm not going to accept that I am willing to pay more to be able to to be sure that I'm doing things with integrity and we've ingrained that even in our staff if a product is, is is not quite good on quality we will not send it to the market because they think issues we can get away with it we will not do that we'll pour it out when we work we respect each other we value each other we make sure that people feel valued and respected. People feel that they are working in a place that we are envisioning a God, a faith-based company that we trust God and we are focused on God. Interestingly, those working with the deaf community experience God through their colleagues and they feel like they learn from each other about God's heart and His reality. We, we disciple each other, we say we disciple each other because they are discipling us, we are discipling them. When we see them work and we see how much they are able to do, for us we see God. We don't just see us, it's not what I put into them, it's what God has put in me that I'm putting in them, what God is actually putting in them. We see God at work every single day in Masaka, mm. yes. Bagareo Salvatore, who is the production manager at Masaka Farm, is among the deaf youth in this company. He joined Masaka in 2018. When he joined Masaka Farm, at first he was a usual production operator, but later on his boss recognized his skills and abilities and made him a supervisor and finally was promoted to the production manager position. Has Salvatore been deaf all his life or something tragic happened to him? Yeah, um, I was not born deaf. I could fully hear us fully speak, but I started getting sick during my young age, uh, it's when I got deaf. It happened in 2000, uh, <laughs> I was almost like six years, seven to six years, yeah. What is his experience like to work at Masaka Farm? I feel really, really good. Before I joined this company as a deaf, it was very hard to get a job to seek for opportunities out here. But when I joined Massacre, after so many struggles, my life changed. I'm able to take care of my basic needs. I don't have to be always relying on my parents. My life has changed, changed a lot based on the fact that I'm working with Massacre. Esther, who had never seen a deaf person until she landed at Masaka, sees God every single day when she's working with her colleagues from the deaf community. I see God when, when, when I wake up in the morning and I, have, I can hear, I can talk, I can do everything, and I have my own challenges, and I'm able, I have challenges, um, I have issues, problems, how, how do I face this challenge, and I come to work and I meet Salvatore, who is deaf, who is a production manager, or I meet Emirates is one of our operators whose mother is sick, who is totally dependent on her. Her mother is not deaf, but she's old and she's sick. And Emirance is deaf, but she's able to take care of her mother. I see God. In as much as she's deaf, she's able to get out of here, get on a motor, go home, take her mother to hospital, make sure she gets the treatment and takes her back home, takes care of her. She's young and she's deaf and she's able to do that. I see God. And, and, I, and, I, and I, I realize when God creates us, he may make you deaf, but he makes you some other strength that is not in somebody else, that each one of us were created in a certain way for our purpose. And God knew I made you deaf, but there's a purpose for you. I give you hearing, but I have a purpose for you. So you know that God, in his own infinite way, has a reason for bringing everyone in their lives and giving them whatever abilities that they have. Mm. Yes. What are the joys of working in such an environment? It's beautiful. It's beautiful to see these young people come here. It's beautiful to watch them thrive. They come to Masaka. They've never been to a factory. They've never been given an opportunity to work. They don't know how to make yogurt when they come to Masaka. We've seen employees who come to us. They don't have a language because they've not communicated with anyone since they were born. So basically they are languageless. 
So they come here, they can't speak sign language, they don't know Kinyarwanda, they don't know English, they don't know anything. So they come here, they meet this community of, of, of people who have the same, like we say, a special ability, and they learn how to interact. And within a short period, you see them interacting with them. They're able to communicate, they're able to say, I need to put this in the yogurt. I need permission to go home. I am, I'm sick, I need to go and see a doctor. They're able to communicate. It is a joy. They come here, the first day they come, they are brought by their parents because their parents believe and it's what they've grown, grown them up knowing they can't do anything by themselves. They have to take them to church, they have to take them home. They come here, they leave them. Three months later, this young man is living in a house on his own. He's paying his own rent. He's able to cook for himself. This young man, two years down the line, is getting married. One year down the line, he has a baby. He's taking care of his family. So it's... It's an absolute joy. On Salvatore's side, what is it that motivates him to come to work every day? Uh, mainly the most reason that makes me to come at Massacre every day on a daily basis is to achieve my life goals. Yeah, it's a very privilege. It's, yeah, we know some people who don't have work. When you have an opportunity to work, you need to use it. One of my main goals is uh, currently I'm taking care of my, my siblings, but in the future I want to be able to get a house. These things push me to come at work every day and thinking about a family in the future. This does not go without challenges, but they work around them and overcome them. Uh, the first challenge, of course, is the communication. But I think as a company, we've learned a way of doing it. So when they come, one of the things we do with our staff, um, regardless of whether you're hearing or deaf, because like I said, even the deaf, when they come, uh, deaf sign language is just like any other language. It's different from where you're coming from. So when they come, we've got to teach them how to speak the massacre sign language, where we are able to communicate with the same thing. So if I do a sign in the morning, it's the same sign for everyone in massacre. Might be different from for everyone else, but in massacre we understand if I do yogurt, this is yogurt. Might not be yogurt for everyone else, but this is yogurt for massacre. So we have to train them how to actually communicate and they learn how to communicate with everyone. And for the hearing, like myself, when I came, I've got to learn sign language. So in massacre, we say when you come to Rwanda, you have to learn the Rwandan language. When you come to Massacre, you have to learn sign language because they're the bigger population. So they rule Massacre. So when you come here, we have to learn sign language. So we've embraced that. We have classes every Friday for the hearing staff where we sit in a class for two hours and sign, learn sign language. We've sent some of our staff to the sign language school in Cabeza to actually learn, learn it properly in a classroom setting. And we interact in sign language. I think you noticed even in the office, we do more of sign language than any other language. That way we've learned how to interact. And everyone knows when you come here, you have to learn sign language. So we've learned how to interact with each other. We laugh at jokes. So sometimes I'll say something is different. It's not the way they understand it. So there are also challenges in terms of communication. Sometimes what I want to say, um, Sometimes because it's sign language, it's not a language I'm used to, then I don't bring in the, the emotion or the intensity of what I'm trying to say might not get through. Mm -hmm. But with time, we've learned how to circumnavigate that. We do have an in-house translator, Kenneth. I think you found him try, try helping me a bit here and there. So he's here full time. He does other things, but he's also a full time translator for us just to make sure that whatever communication needs to go around is actually going around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How about Salvatore? What are the challenges he faces in his work? Um, I'm not able to highlight any challenge right now because uh, everything is smooth here in Massacre. One of the challenges which might pop up is people not being able to communicate with us. But we are very glad that our other colleagues who can hear are able to use sign language. This is very important for us and it solves our, most of the issues. There's no other big challenge we can meet rather than that. If that is solved, that means we can also deal with the other things. Masaka Farm has just been rebranded and their new brand emphasizes on the quality of love they make their products with. So we are rebranding come next year and I think you've seen some of them on the market. So we are 
you're going to have from, from what you had before, which was an Italian brand. Uh, we are looking to, 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 to bring in a new massacre, not the old massacre. We are a new massacre. We are more about love. We are more about joy. So we want every cup of yogurt that you take, every sip of Vicky Bogoto that you take, every single butter that you apply on your bread. We want you to have love, to feel nice, feel joy, feel loved, feel that passion. We want you to feel the, the passion that you put into that product when you're preparing it. We want you to see Salvatore, see Emirates, and how happy they are to be working in Massacre and the, the opportunities that they've got eh, in that product. So that's the idea behind us rebranding. We're also growing as a company. We are also just not just expanding in diary. We're going to be moving to non diary. We have a lot of new exciting things coming in, come next year. So we needed a, a, a way to be able to expand not just massacre farms. Massacre farms is um, is diary, but you want to be more than diary. You want to be a brand that is known for many other things, not just diary. Yes. Asta views her work as much more than a business, but a way of serving God and people. I think for me, I look at it as um, this is a ministry. When you look at what we do, we don't look at it as, as just a business. It's a ministry. And I believe you can do a ministry anywhere. You can be able to do a ministry from your, where you are. You start small. You don't have to start big. You don't have to start with 100 people. That one person that you're impacting, that one person that you're discipling, goes on to disciple so many other, goes on to make an impact on so many other people. And, and focus on God and listen to God on what he's calling you to do. Once you focus on God and you listen and you know God is telling you move in this direction, trust him to actually make a way. When John started, he had a purpose, he had a focus. I want to make an impact on the deaf. He didn't know how, but he trusted God to make a way. And God made a way. Miraculously, there was a company that was up for sale. Miraculously, he was able to get the two or three that he got. Miraculously, he was able to get people who helped him to train them. And God has been faithful. We've seen God in every single year that we've got making a profit every single year. We know it's God's grace. There are a lot of challenges. We, there's milk, which is a problem during the summer period. There are, I don't know, sometimes they foot and mouth diseases on the cows and you're not able to get. We just had an accident last week where two of our employees are actually in hospital currently. But we still see God because they had an accident. They didn't die. They were injured. God has sent them through. They are already, one who is already out of the hospital. I think focusing on God, he makes ways where you don't, you don't see ways, where you think I've reached a roadblock. This is a challenge I have. He makes a way. As long as you trust that, he will make a way and focus on him. You will be able to make it. Businesses, give it a chance. Look at it as a God-given uh, blessing. Whatever God has blessed you with, bless other people with it. It doesn't have to be the deaf, by the way. It could be the women. It could be people who have other disabilities. For Massacre, we've chosen to focus on the deaf. That's where our purpose is. But you could also give a chance to any other disabled person. Don't look at them as disabled. Look at them as differently able. Like I said, they do have strength that the hearing don't have. So look at them as differently able and not disabled. Massacre Farm is not only making an impact on the deaf community, but also to 3,000 farmers who supply them with milk. What does Salvatore actually believe about Jesus? Uh, I believe God sent his own son to come on earth and save us from our sins. And what does that mean in the way he lives his life? The main way I apply faith is that me living knowing my future is better than today. Based on my current situation, like right now, um, I have big goals, but the only way to achieve them is with faith. I might be not having a house today, but I believe in the future I'm going to get this. I believe I'm going to start a family and it will all go well. I believe, I work every day believing that this is going to happen. Salvatore also shared with us what he's excited about in this Christmas season. Um, my plans for this Christmas are simple, but I'm so excited for them. I'll be going to my mother's house with all my siblings 
so we can share and enjoy Christmas together. How wonderful, how lovely. I think this story is really beautiful and having been there myself, walking in that room and seeing people who actually cannot hear or speak, but who are making beautiful things that we all enjoy and my family enjoys it, probably other people's uh, families are enjoying it and I'm sure uh, they are really living a life that is fruitful than they would have if someone has not shown that love to them that actually even though they were born with that disability they still have special abilities that's how that's their language that's what they talk about when you go to Masaka farm they tell you they have a special ability they have special abilities that's why they are able to communicate and still be able to produce uh, the beautiful products that we we buy when actually they cannot speak or, or hear so I think it's a it's a it's a wake-up call for us especially if you can hear and talk to ask yourself do I actually uh, realize how blessed I am? Am I grateful for all that God has given to me? Am I being a blessing? Did you see the face of Salvador? How he's happy, he's joyful. You know, even other colleagues around him, like they carry the joy, they are joyful. As they said that they, they are really doing their work with joy and love, they're packaging it with love. I think it's very important that even as we go around, as people, when we wake up in the morning, we think, you know, I am able to wake up. My body is functioning and be grateful to God and be out there thinking that it's actually a blessing that we should be able to bless others, not just for us to be blessed, but to bless others. So I want to end uh, today's episode with a few questions to you who is watching. Uh, I don't know what you've been you know, going through. I don't know if you were challenged by some things that you have heard or even in your lives, if whatever you've struggled with throughout this year. But I want to ask you, even if you are challenged, are you being a blessing, a blessing to someone? Like these people, they can't hear, they can't talk, but they're being a blessing. Are you being a blessing to someone? Or you are just concentrating, or you're just focusing on all your issues? Are you being a blessing to someone? Are you struggling with a weakness or a disability? I want to tell you that God loves you. And God loves you so much that he gave his son. That's why we celebrate him in this Christmas season. And the same God who loves you, who loves those people you just saw, he loves you too. And even if you have a disability or a challenge, he can help you to overcome it and make you be fulfilled in your life and actually be able to live out the purpose he has created you for. And I think it's very important we find out what we were created for. And as we come to an end, I want to also ask you, have you received Jesus Christ? Have you received the love of God? The love of God that was demonstrated to us through Jesus Christ. Have you? And if you have not, I want to tell you that the love of God actually has a name and his name is Jesus. The name of the love of God is no other than Jesus Christ because he was the one who God sent to us to really show us what he looks like. So I want to invite you today as we close to the heart to heart show of today that you will actually open up your heart and let Jesus in. Let this Christmas season not be an empty Christmas. Don't celebrate Christmas without Christ, but actually allow him to be Lord of your life. So if you want to make that decision, if you want to live a life that is safe in him, and I want to actually explain what it means to receive him as Lord, is we allow him to lead our lives, to be in control of our lives. We surrender to him. We act, open up our hearts and we're like, our lives are yours. We are no longer for ourselves. We open up our hearts and lives for you to come and be Lord. And that's a decision that you will not regret. And that's the only way actually you become a, ch a child of God. And that's the way your life is safe for eternity because the Bible says to me that to all those who believed in him, he gave the power to become the children of God. So if you believe in Jesus, you become a child of God. You are, you are already created by God. You are a person of God. But to become a child of God, you have to believe in his son, Jesus Christ. So how I pray that today would be your day. How I pray that tonight would be the night where you will remember for your whole life that you gave your life to Jesus Christ. And as I end, I also wanted to uh, quickly read something I, I read in the office of Masaka Farm. Because probably you are already you have already given your life to Christ, but you are wondering what you can do with your life. So something I, I read that caught my eye when I walk in the office of Masaka Farm is they say 
uh, that their kingdom purpose is this, raising the poor from dust to inherit a seat of honor among those with authority. Hallelujah. I love this. Raising the poor from dust to inherit a seat of honor among those with authority. And this is what they are doing. They are bringing people who are in poverty and they are lifting them up from a poverty actually to give them a seat of honor among those who are in authority. And this you can find in the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 8. But I think it also has an analogy of what Christ does. When Christ finds us, he finds us like in the dust of sin, in the dust of not knowing God and knowing who he is. But he lifts us up when we open up our lives to him. He lifts us up out of that dust and we are seated with him. Who else is honorable than God? Who else is with authority than God? He's, and we are seated. That's what the Bible says that when we believe in Christ, we are seated with him. We are seated with him in the heavenly places. That, I think, is a mystery, is a miracle. It's too hard for us to understand. But that's the truth of, of the word of God. So today, if you have not allowed Christ to lift you up from the dust of sin, from the dust of no purpose, I pray that today will be your day where you will make him Lord and know that your name is written in the book of life and that your, your eternity is safe in his hands. We love you so much. Shalom, shalom.